Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, fellow Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 111. That's 111 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. Our midweek supplemental episode, as we like to call it, where we get a chance to uh, dive deep into knives, talk about uh, knife stories in the news, product drops, let Bob uh, kind of talk about new knives, do some knife reviewing. And today we're going to talk about the Ultimate Steel promo, as well as Bob's Instagram knife auction coming up. Tomorrow night, if you're listening as this uh, show drops on Wednesday, May 13th, that auction coming up tomorrow night, and that's uh, also going to benefit Knife Rights. A couple of stories and Knife Life news to talk about. A new folding Bowie, or buoy, however you like to uh, talk about it, that also has a cleaver from Civivi, as well as Spyderco's 2020 knife reveal. And we're going to be diving into Bob's state of the collection with some new knives from SOG. So, Bob, a lot to talk about, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's always like, oh, this Wednesday supplemental, just a couple of things to discuss. But then I start right. going, right? Put a couple of topics on the paper and it looks like uh, three minutes <laughs> worth of stuff, but uh, there's a lot of stuff behind each of those topics. Yes. Well, these are deep and important things. Right? The first thing I want to I wanna mention, and we mention this on every show right now, is the Ultimate Steel promo. Uh, we just had uh, on this week's interview show, we had Doug Ritter uh, talking about... Uh, Knife rights in the age of COVID and and what uh, knife rights has been going through, not to mention uh, also the release of his new mini RSK Mark II. Uh, that's the awesome Ritter grip now made by uh, Hogue. Knife rights and the ultimate steel uh, is now open season. So that means uh, they are now taking donations for this several month long fun drive and you have the chance to win some amazing custom and production knives depending on what level you uh, you donate in at and then uh, of course we here at the knife junkie are going to be auctioning off the uh, items that were donated during during the uh, april 18th town hall uh, some bob terzawola items going out in one lot and a super cq7 CQC7, excuse me, by Emerson, going out in another lot. Uh, so the proceeds from that auction on Instagram will, will also be going to the Ultimate Steel. Please check out Knife Rights. Check out Doug Ritter and his amazing uh, uh, knives that he has right now, OEM by Hogue, and they're just killing it. Yeah, just want to support them, Jim. I, I just want to mention them every, every chance I get because it's because of them that so many more people in this country, for instance, right now can carry an automatic knife. He's been working hard in our state. Our state has been has been uh, very stubborn, but uh, I know he'll break through. So I want to keep supporting him. And maybe a change of administration will help as well in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might have to be what it is. All right. But uh, again, that's uh, kniferights.org or go to, I think, ultimatesteel.org. Or in your favorite uh, search engine, if you'll just uh, type in Ultimate Steel 2020, you'll go to the uh, Ultimate Steel Knife Rights page right there. And uh, a lot of great stuff to uh, have a chance to win. A lot of uh, donation levels. If you feel like giving 20 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever, there's lots of different breakdowns. And uh, with each level of donation, you get an increased level of uh, entries uh, for chances to win. And if you'll go back and listen to episode 110, which was this past Sunday, thenifejunkie.com slash 110. Again, as Bob said, you'll hear that interview with Doug Ritter, more explanation and uh, details about uh, the Knife Rights Organization. It's amazing to me the, the level of, uh, of product that makers and manufacturers donate to this very cause to, to raise interest in the ultimate steel because they understand – uh, that Doug is fighting for the for their very, for their very right to exist, basically to manufacture and make these things. So, I mean, you'll get you have a chance to win some incredible custom knives. Um, oh, I, okay, I'm just going on. Just check it out, Ultimate Steel, UltimateSteel.org, um, and check it out. Okay, so yeah, great uh, great stuff there from uh, Knife Rights and uh, Bob. Today is Wednesday. Our Thursday night show comes out. Every Thursday, which is i.e. tomorrow, in case you're listening today when this show drops, if 
all that makes sense. But uh, last Thursday Night Knives, a really great show. I enjoyed it. Uh, Spirited Whiskey was the uh, yeah. guest co-host. What a breadth of knowledge and just a, a great co-host, I thought. Yeah, excellent. A great guy. Um, really excellent taste and uh, an incredible collection kind of on the very high end. But we had an interesting conversation and, and we landed at uh, – um, you know, the effectiveness of all these Chinese OEMs like Best Tech, We, Riot, etc., and how um, that market is thriving in China and how perhaps that market could be thriving in the United States, too. And we started talking about what if there was a more robust OEM community or market here and what if that was some sort of collaborative? I don't know. You start bringing the word collaborative, it starts sounding like communism and things are going to get unfair. But but basically, or, or either woo woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're all going to get together, and it's going to be kumbaya. And we'll yeah. make knives. Woo. But, but, but the point is, like, is it possible to be making some of these incredibly manufactured OEM knives, like say that we or Riot makes, but here in the states? And it was a topic that uh, we kind of locked onto, and people were responding to. So, if you have any thoughts on that, email us, and uh, you know, just let us know. I'm kind of interested. Not that I'm planning on starting an OEM, but uh, it is uh, it is a, uh, an idea whose time has come here in the United States, and I think the current climate really underscores that. Well, we could certainly be involved in the promotion and marketing end of this uh, new American-made OEM. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so if you, had, if you do have thoughts about that, and yeah, it was an interesting conversation, email Bob at uh, bob at com or... Uh, give us a call on the listener line. Let us know your thoughts. We'd love to play them back here on one of the uh, podcasts, or if you'll join us on Thursday Night Knives, we can continue this conversation. But call the listener line at 724-466-4487. That's 724-466-4487. Let us know your thoughts about the American OEM. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So yet again, Savivi has a couple of new knives that we're going to discuss. And I know that lead-in does not sound enthusiastic, but actually these are pretty cool. Um, but this is all coming from the perspective of a single Savivi knife owner. Uh, I own the Shredder, and I like it for its for the qualities that it's lauded for. However, it's not quite my thing, and I think I'll probably be moving it along. But these two new uh, Savivis that they have, they have a new Bowie model called the Dogma, which is kind of an interesting, well, they're both interesting names. And then the, uh, and then they have a cleaver or, 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 um, yeah, it's like a cleaver shaped folder called the Mini Bull Mastiff, which is kind of funny, Mini Bull Mastiff. These are interesting for two different reasons. I'll start with the uh, low hanging fruit. The Mini Bull Mastiff will be the first Civivi cleaver shaped blade. And um, though they are not for me, I don't have any cleaver-shaped blades. and This is a nice-looking one. It's got a deep fuller that runs down the top in lieu of a, a hanging hole, if you will. Um, but uh, this is an appealing cleaver-shaped blade, but on the whole, I, I, don't, I don't generally tend to go there. It has a nice sort of gradual belly. It has a, a very high flat grind. That's what I think the real USP of this knife is going to be. Besides the look of it and the shape, it's that the blade is very broad and it's flat ground all the way to the top. So it's going to be a hell of a slicer, no doubt. And and you have the Civivi uh, legacy behind it, and that's what they pride themselves on, thin, 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 slicey blades. So uh, the other knife is the Dogma, and this is a Bowie blade, and it's, it's just under three and a half inches, which makes it just that less tempting to me. Well, before you go on, explain that, because if if folks are new or relatively right, newer right, right. knife chunky listeners, why why does that not fit in your wheelhouse? I, I apologize. You're right. That is 100% my taste. Uh, I like four inch. I, I prefer the four inch blade and will go down as low as 3.5, but 3.46. I just cannot no, go there. can't do that. <laughs> Got to draw the line somewhere, man. <laughs> well, it depends on how sweet it is. And to me, this just isn't that sweet. Oh, okay. It's it's your standard D2 uh, and G10, you know, no doubt an awesome. It will be a great knife for those who, who need this kind of uh, hollow ground, beautifully uh, hollow ground and thin behind the edge. Civivi. Uh, the thing that interests me about this knife, though, the Dogma uh, Bowie, the new one they have coming out, is that the handle itself, A, it looks neutral and very comfortable, but it also mimics 
uh, the the way they have milled the G10, it mimics a bolstered blade with jigged bone handles. And so, you know me, I'm a sucker for the jigged bone handles on my case knives and my in my Great Eastern cutlery knives. I love the the traditional treatment of of bone. Or, or you look at a Tom Crine, one of the small fixed blades by Tom Crine, he does the same thing. It's beautiful. Something about that is really evocative uh, of an older time to me. And so to see this new Civivi Bowie, and and by the way, the Bowie blade has a, has very. Uh, it looks almost like a shredder, I guess. If you if you take a shredder and give it the a little bit more of the clip treatment up front, uh, it looks a bit like that. But you add that handle, and and it really is kind of a cool looking thing. If it didn't do that with the handle, if Civivi didn't give it that traditional treatment in the G10 milling, I'd say eh. It just looks kind of like a uh, a variant of the shredder. That's your opinion. It, it is my opinion. A and B, there are collectors of all things. Right. Some people can't believe I love Emerson knives, or some people can't believe I love uh, cold steel knives. And they'd say, look at this Civivi. It's way less, and it's it's way more refined. And I get it. But, you know, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is a pretty sweet, I, I got to say, these two new Civivis are kind of are kind of compelling. Okay. So moving from Civivi to Spyderco, we've got only, as we said, two stories to cover in Knife Life News yep. this week, yep. uh, but a lot within each one. Uh, yep. Five uh, new knives from Spyderco you want to go over? Well, no, or, or not, not that, all of them. Or. Well, this is volume five of their oh, okay. 2020 reveals. As you remember, Jim, uh, uh, this is their reveal, first. F- reveal five, not yes. reveal five knives. Yes, sir. You know what? It was my my lack of the use of comments in my notes to you, or, or commas. I should have put a comma there. You would have known what I meant. <laughs> See, kids, punctuation. Uh, yeah, so so 2020 was the first year that Spider Code decided to do their reveals in steps so that they weren't showing everyone all the amazing new knives in January that they weren't going to be able to get till December. Uh, so they wouldn't have to field all those emails, I guess. So they've been they've been uh, giving us a drip feed of their new 2020 knives, and the and the recent one, the recent reveal is awesome. I'm going to start with uh, the pochi. Pochi means dog, I guess, or puppy in uh, in Japanese. And uh, Kazuyuki Sakurai, uh, who's a a, a a knife maker, designed this tiny little knife with a one and a half inch uh, S45 VN blade in the body of the knife that looks like a little dog's body. Now, it's not, it's evocative of a dog's body uh, with the flipper tab in the front and then a little uh, bird's beak at the back of the handle. It looks like two legs. The stubby little one and a half inch blade looks kind of like a a dog's head. And then you have the eye, uh, the the opening hole of the spider coat looks like the dog's eye. And then a little tail thing pops out of the back that looks like a a tail. This is such a small two-finger knife that that little tail thing that pops out gives you a place to add a third finger for purchase, kind of like how you might hold a straight razor. So very interesting knife, Uh, cute as hell, okay? And uh, when I saw it, I was like, my daughter is uh, my nine year old is almost ten, and she she's very much looking forward to getting her first knife. It's going to be a Swiss Army knife, by the way. But I thought, how cool would it be to get one of these pochies? Let's see how much this sucker costs. So uh, the <laughs> the the MSRP is two eighty five. So obviously, I will not be getting this uh, for my daughter, who can't you know hold on to anything. So, but you might be getting it for yourself to give to her when she's older and more yeah, to to bequeath down. <laughs> Well, you know, cool as it is, I only need pictures of this. This oh, okay. I, I do not need to own. But what I do need to own is also on this release, and it is called the Yo Jumbo. Yes, that's right. Michael Janich's Yo Jimbo Two is getting the four-inch blade workout, and uh, it looks awesome. So check it out. Go go to the Spider Co. website and check out the Yo Jumbo. It is a four-inch Yo Jimbo Two. It has all the same styling cues, except sort of elongated, and the handle makes up for that. I mean, they didn't just blow it up by whatever percentage. They obviously uh, spent a lot of time reworking the ergonomics of this to make it work better in a larger format. One of the one of the greatest uh, parts of the Yojimbo is how the hand how the handle kind of disappears and nestles into your hand. Well, this is a much larger thing, so they had to 
rework the ergonomics and it looks awesome. I am I'm very excited about the Yojumbo. So excited that I actually did a pre-order and I never ever ever do a pre-order. Wow. One for the history books. <laughs> yes, it's so interesting that they will be writing this down in history. Two two more, two more to tell you about. The other one is a Warren Cliff, it's the Canis and this thing is cool. It it is it's got it's got a a, a crazy looking it looks like a toucan to me, you know the 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 Fruit Loops bird. It looks like a toucan blade, uh, or the blade looks like a toucan head, and it's got this really crazy swedge carved into the top to to lighten the blade, but it gets fat towards the tip. It's a very low flat grind. It looks almost like a Scandi grind with a secondary edge, and an incredibly ergonomic looking handle. Beautiful looking handle that uh, I, I mentioned this on Thursday Night Knives last week. Any sort of blade, I could see a number of different blade shapes coming off of this handle and just looking stupendous. It looks uh, like a like a great platform for the hand. The one thing I don't like is it's got the peel plied carbon fiber. Now that's a little tone deaf, Spiderco, because first of all, two things: carbon fiber doesn't look that cool that you have to fake it. A and B, there's carbon fiber is like you're seeing real carbon fiber on some cheap cheap knives. So come on. 275 for for carbon fiber over G10 is I think that's a little much. There you go. That's my rant for the day. But the Canis, wow, what a cool looking knife! And I know that it was designed by a gentleman whose name I don't have in front of me, but uh, who who is a, a law enforcement and tactical, and so this is meant for all of that kind of stuff. And you know, since I live that kind of lifestyle 24 seven, Daddy O, uh, this looks like the knife for me. All right, and lastly is the uh, Marching Sleesh designed Swayback. Sleesh is the guy who designed the Bowie, uh, the uh, the Spiderco Sleesh Bowie that uh, is much beloved and uh, much sought after now on the secondary market. And then, of course, the Spidey Chef, which has gone through two iterations now with Spiderco, and uh, also the um, the Techno, both Techno knives he designed. Well, this I guess is his fifth Spiderco knife, and it's called the Swayback. And it is the traditional slip joint swayback pattern iterated in the uh, modern titanium frame locking, uh, well, think sleesh buoy, except with the swayback treatment, swayback design. It's got the contoured, uh, beautifully contoured and treated uh, titanium handles. It's got uh, XHP, uh, CTS XHP Warncliffe blade. Uh, it's three and a third inches long, I believe, and uh, this thing will no doubt be the next Spidey Chef, the next uh, Sleesh Buoy, and uh, people are going nuts over it. I, I have not, uh, I have no designs on it, but uh, looks very, very, very sweet. And why do you think everybody's going to go crazy for it? Because everyone went crazy. Everyone goes crazy for all of his designs from oh, Spider-Man. Okay. The Techno is a very uh, popular small little knife. And then the Spidey Chef, which I know you've heard a lot of mm -hmm. people are crazy about. And they continue to uh, see they've done, like I said, a a, a quality upgrade of that through Spider Co. So they keep making mm -hmm. that and upgrading that. And then the Sleesh buoy, which was canceled, which, which they discontinued a little while ago. Oh, okay. And, and I, I believe that was only to make... To demand. make it more desirable <laughs> because everyone loved that knife and it was expensive and people were buying it. Mm. Um, so this will no doubt, this looks the most like the the buoy and the Sleesh buoy is, is the most heralded of all of his uh, designs with them. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. All right. Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 111. Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 111. Thank you so much for listening. If you have questions or comments, Again, please call the listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. Comment on anything you're hearing here, give us some feedback about the show, or just leave us a question or comment that we can play on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Okay, back on the Knife Junkie Podcast, again, episode 111 that you'll find at thenifejunkie.com slash 111. Thenifejunkie.com is where you'll find all of the podcast, as well as uh, links to Bob's videos, Thursday Night Knives, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. We'll talk about Thursday Night Knives a little bit more here as, uh, as we come up, but now it's the state of the collection time, where Bob really gets to... Uh, 
have fun and talk about new knives in his collection. And I guess we should have called this one the uh, the SOG show, Bob, because you've got several SOG knives you want to talk about. I do. I do. Uh, I recently, uh, we recently interviewed uh, Jonathan Wegner, uh, the man responsible for the rebranding at SOG. And uh, it was a very interesting conversation. It'll be coming out on the Knife Junkie podcast, Sunday edition, this coming Sunday. And uh, he sent along some knives so that I would be uh, informed during our conversation because part of the rebranding at SOG is taking some legacy knives like the Aegis and the Flash and the Trident and updating them and uh, taking them away from the silver and black kind of Walmarty knives to something a little bit more that not just knife uh, people who need knives to work want, but knife people want. Uh, they they did a whole bunch of, uh, got a whole bunch of user feedback and kind of really took the temperature of the knife market and, and then went about their rebranding and sent, uh, they sent me three knives. And uh, one of one of which, uh, Jim, in Carolina Blue, I'm sending over to you through the mail shortly. Well, of course, go Tar Heels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, they sent the the Aegis and the Flash and the Kiku, and they sent the Kiku because uh, I think they know I, I have a a real soft spot for my Carta and uh, real uh, high speed low drag knives, and that that's one of them. Um, but really, I wanted to focus for just a second on their rebranded Aegis and Flash. Now, these are legacy uh, knives with SOG, and I think it was so smart not to just scrub everything and start from new, uh, start from scratch, but to take these very popular knives and, you know, dress them up a little bit, give them a little bit better steel. These are now using cryogenically treated heat uh, uh, D2. And give them nicer, give them some colors, give them a, uh, some treatment, get get rid of some of the branding. You know, the, the SOG folders just had SOG everywhere, written everywhere, literally both sides of the blade, on the clip, here, there, kind of molded into the texture of the plastic. It was just like SOG, SOG, SOG. And uh, I think everyone, SOG included, thought it was too much. And so they they kind of like made these knives more tasteful. But didn't get rid of the of the of the. Uh... Now I'm going to shift into talking just about the Aegis because this is the one I've used. Yours, okay. Jim, I have not used. Keep but they your hands ha- off of it. <laughs> well, they have kept the same profile of the handle and the same profile of the blade, but just upgraded. And man, I, so yeah, this past weekend on Saturday, I took uh, the Aegis AT. AT stands for Assisted Technology, uh, out into the back nine or back quarter, if you will. And uh, used it while I was cleaning up in the backyard. And it was great. Uh, vine cutting is the thing I do most with my knives in the back. And it chewed through the vines uh, like they weren't there. And then I cleaned it off. And then later, I ended up using it in the kitchen for apples and butter. So if you know what the Aegis blade looks like, they kept the profile. It looks kind of like a mini chef's knife, I got to say. And um, it's on some very thin blade stock and it's fully flat ground. So this was great at doing both uh, cutting real fibrous uh, kind of rough materials like uh, Virginia creeper vine we have in the back. And then later on, it was great at cutting butter and cheese, things that that are notoriously kind of difficult to cut because of their stickiness. And, uh, and then apples, it sliced really nicely, could get really thin without wedging through. So I'm really excited about these SOG knives. I, I have to be 100% honest. I had written them off completely. And then when I saw that they had, uh, over this past year, gone through a whole, uh, not just a, a revolution in the redesign, but also in their thinking. You know, if you read any of the material on their website, their their whole approach has changed, you know, to uh, considering the user and the purpose of the knife and then designing from there. And uh the, the small bit I have of this legacy brand that I w- once loved, I, I'm really happy to see what they've come back with. Okay. So it turned you around. Yeah, it has. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, I'm a 100% convert. I'm going to continue to thrash on this Aegis uh, and, and see what happens. Uh, but so far, it's great. And you know what? I am, I am so over assisted knives. But this, these, Jim, you'll find this, it almost jumps out of your hand. It's like a Protec. 
mm-hmm. except assisted. It's a the the assist on this is awesome, right? Just say. So is it uh, just a combination of the, and I don't want to say small, but a combination of every little thing they did, the the decreased billboarding, the colors, the you know the difference of steel. Is it just all those little things that they put together that has really helped make this? I I, I think so because uh, I had an Aegis a long time ago, and it it fit the basic form of this current Aegis, but. The quality, all of those things that you mentioned, plus the quality of the build, it just feels like a solid knife. Oh. Uh, the the uh, SOG folders have not felt like solid knives since the early 90s, wow. and now they feel solid again. I mean, this thing, uh, I've, I've been fidgeting like mad with it, and there's still no blade play. And uh, and with assisted uh, knives, you know, you fidget with them long enough, they're going to, they're going to it's going to start to affect the pivot. Right. I haven't experienced any of that yet. I, I'm I'm quite impressed. Guys. Wow. Okay. Well, reviews, of course, coming on all, what, three of these knives uh, from Zog? Not yours. <laughs> because you, I mean, can, I, you can do a review on it, Bob. I'll do a little Just show be gentle. of it. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a beauty. Yours. Yeah. So, so uh, Jim is getting the Flash. The Flash is another legacy uh, model from SOG. And and the treatment they gave the Flash is great. They made it a little bit bigger. It's a three and a half inch blade. Um, oh, that's my wheelhouse. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Inside joke there, folks. If you're <laughs> l- listening, you know Bob's wheelhouse. It's got to be over. It's got to be a yeah, certain, yeah, certain right. limit there. Exactly. Three and a half or long. So this fits right, right in there. And um, uh, it's got a nice uh, high, high saber grind. And uh, they, I, I asked them to send one of the knives with serrations, and they sent the flash with serrations. And they look great. Haven't used them yet and probably won't until I buy my own because I don't want to sully Jim's blade. Uh, but great jimping up, uh, up a, a quarter of the handle and a nice, beautiful canary blue color and solid as hell. This thing whips out and, and just really solid. They've, they've done they've – done, some great work here. Deep carry pocket clip that subtly says SOG on it. And another very universally useful shaped, usefully shaped blade. So, mm. yeah. Well, you call it canary blue. I like to call it Carolina, Carolina blue, blue. For, for my uh, Carolina tar heels. So, right. uh. <laughs> and not for nothing. I got, I got to mention one more thing, Jim. Yep. Everyone will notice they have a lock on the spine that sticks up. And when I saw it, I was like, that doesn't look comfortable. And I have not yet, found a way to, to turn it into a hotspot. It's amazing. How they placed it is actually utilitarian in a saber grip as a thumb thumb catch. Uh, and then in any other grip, I just don't feel it. So hmm. uh, the lock is not a non-starter. Well, again, you'll uh, see rev- video reviews of uh, all these knives from SOG on Bob's YouTube channel. That's thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash YouTube. If you are not yet a subscriber, please do so. Do do so. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash YT subscribe. And Bob, that gives me a quick chance to uh, congratulate you on a mini milestone, if you will. 2,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Just oh, crossed yeah. that earlier this week. So uh, uh, yeah. congratulations for the 2,000 subs. Many more in the future. And thanks to everybody for subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's cool. It's a it's a it's an interesting milestone. Each time you cross one of those numbers, like when we did a hundred podcasts, I was like, I was like, yeah, oh, so many people have done so many more, but I'm not so many other people. I'm me and a hundred. That's pretty cool. Right. <laughs> or 2000 subscribers. That means there are 2000 people who are willing to listen to my voice. <laughs> And uh, as everybody's listened to the podcast know, our, our favorite uh, word we like to say is bloviate. Bob yes. uh, bloviates about knives, and we appreciate you listening to Bob bloviate about knives. So uh, thanks again for uh, for all the subscribers. And uh, please, if you have any feedback for us uh, on the uh, YouTube videos, uh, be sure you to uh, thumbs up or comment or whatever. Give a question on the Knife Junkie uh, YouTube channel. And, of course, don't forget the Thursday Night Knives live show where you, of course, can uh, interact with Bob on the show, comment and that kind of thing. But also you have the ability to come on the show yep. if you have a webcam or even a smartphone that has the the video uh, capability, which smartphones today, which one doesn't. You can join by smartphone for just a few minutes, show off a knife that you have. Maybe you have a knife you want to sell. You can come on and uh, show it off and maybe uh, get somebody to buy it. And uh, all that is right there for you every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Thursday Night Knives. 
I also want to add, if you have a point that you want to make in the conversation we're having also, that's a great way to chime in. And you don't have to be on for long. That is actually how we, uh, how we, how we got Spirited Whiskey. He was commenting a lot and then, was, come on, come on, do it. Come, just come on the show and, and, and debate uh, on the knife fight. And he shellacked me. He came on and out debated <laughs> the hell out of me. It was awesome. So uh, that's, how we've, uh, that's how we've met some of our friends. So even if you just have a comment you want to make in an argument or, or in, a, in a, a line of conversation, chime in and then dip. Yeah. It's all good. Absolutely. And uh, mentioning Thursday Night Knives, of course, that's coming up tomorrow. If you're listening to this podcast when it comes out on Wednesday, May 13th, tomorrow, Thursday, May 14th, is another episode of Thursday Night Knives. Again, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But tomorrow, Thursday, May 14th, is also the Knife Junkies Instagram auction with all proceeds going to Knife Rights. And uh, that's going to be on his Instagram channel, which you can find at thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram. So, Bob, uh, again, I know folks have heard it before, but uh, why don't you kind of give us the details about the auction, how folks can bid. And uh, again, that's going to be... uh, well, I'll just let you give all the details. Well, we're auctioning off two lots uh, that were donated to us during the uh, April 18th town hall. Uh, our good friend Stu from Stone and Steel up in New England donated an Emerson Super CQC7, which is a great uh, chisel ground tanto uh, Emerson to us. And also Bob Terzuola donated a copy of his new book, a beautifully milled out a uh, dragon head logo uh, cap lifter uh, in titanium and, and uh, anodized bright green. And also the compact tactical folder that he designed and that we made and that drop distributed. So that's a three product lot. Both of those lots, the Terzuola lot and the Emerson lot, will be uh, starting at $100. $100 and each bid will be uh, you'll be going up by $10 increments and each time you bid it has to be a new comment in the feed that way it is time stamped and I can tell who the very last person is uh, to bid now it's only open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Thursday so when we start Thursday night knives we're gonna <laughs> right at the very beginning we're, we're going to be uh, figuring out who the winner is, and we'll announce it right then. And I'm expecting it to be a bit of a Charlie Foxtrot, and that's kind of exciting. Right. Yeah, because you'll be uh, trying to start a show and end an auction, and yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations to you on trying to figure that one out. Thank you. You'll, you'll all be witnessing the genius in real time. Right. Or, or <laughs> right. not. <laughs> I love auctions and I go to, I used to go to a lot of physical auctions, of course, but uh, do a ton of online auctions. And this is kind of the same thing. The Instagram auction, you have to leave a comment with your bid amount in the comment. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great way to hopefully win uh, one of the uh, two great knife packages, but also to raise money for knife rights. All the proceeds go to the organization Knife Rights. So you definitely want to bid early. Get that low bid in and follow it during the day so that when you get out bid, you can go back in and get your uh, your your winning bid, hopefully, put in on the uh, on the auction. So uh, definitely a, a cool idea, Bob, for this Instagram uh, knife auction. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'm going to add details in the Instagram uh, post about sniping. I'm not I'm not I, I am not a huge auction goer, but I do know that some people uh, wait till the very last second. Yeah. And then and then just drop something in. And, and I know there are ways to avoid that. And I've done a little bit of research on like five minute time lag at the end. I, I don't know. I, I have a feeling we're all pretty cool and no one's no one's going to be doing that. But I don't know. Just just be cool. And we're, we're going to look for it. Well, I think the uh, the thing you mentioned is that the timestamp is going to be critical so that if, if, a, if a comment with the bid comes in at 10 one. That's that's going to not be counted, right? Right, right, exactly. So yes. you got to kind of have to watch your time, and everybody's times are different. You know, your computer time may so something different than your phone time. So true. Yeah. Don't be waiting till the very last second, folks. If you want one of these lots, go ahead and get your bid in. You know, nine fifty nine as close as you can. If you're if you're one of those that likes to wait till the end, but but my suggestion, go ahead and bid high and bid early. That way, you'll yep. have a chance to uh, potentially get it. 
So, uh, not for nothing, but I have checked out, just for quality control, both of the knives uh, in both lots. And, um, well, they're sweet. Let me just say, uh, the CQC7, uh, the Emerson, does not have a box. Uh, but you can tell from the G10 and the clip, it has not been carried. Uh, may have been pawed over a little bit uh, from uh, at a knife show or two. But it's in beautiful, perfect condition. And the same thing with the drop knife, the, the uh, compact tactical folder by Terzawola. It is every bit a wee, but it's also every bit a Terzawola, man. You put it in your hand, it feels great, and it's got that beautiful, beautiful look. So really, check them out and uh, <laughs> and and bid bid early and bid often. Right. Uh, because I don't want to have to buy that CQC7. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know, you know. But just, I just might. <laughs> just saying, and it will. It's, it is fair and above board if Bob decides to uh, comment, you know, 10 or 15 minutes on before the Thursday Night Live's uh, show, he makes a bid and a comment on his own channel to to win. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's all above board. We're not yeah. trying to sneak anything in here, folks. Oh, oh no way! No Just way. Uh, make the announcement, like I uh, when I would go to live auctions, the people working the floor, the ring men, as they were calling it, they would try to find bids in the crowd. Some auctions they were not allowed to bid. Some auctions they are allowed to bid. But the auctioneer <laughs> always stated, "Our ring men are allowed to bid in this auction." So. Ring men here, me and Bob, we're yeah. allowed. We're allowed to bid in this auction. We're not trying to drive the price up, but uh, we're we're wanting those lots. So uh, you may see a, a bid from uh, uh, the knife newbie or the knife junkie. So uh, we're we're we're, yeah. we're trying to get them just as much as you are. Well, you know, to to <laughs> it's like my mouth was working faster than my brain because they didn't really stipulate when they gave <laughs> us those things that we had to auction them off. But right. but it sort of popped out, and I was like, ah, now I got to do it. Now I right. can't just keep it. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, right. All right. Again, that's uh, Thursday, May 14th, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., the Instagram Knife Auction on the Knife Junkies Instagram channel at thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram. If you happen to be catching this podcast after Thursday, May 14th, who knows, maybe some uh, Instagram Knife Auctions later in our future here on the Knife Junkie uh, YouTube or Knife Junkie uh, channel. Yeah, you know what, Jim? That might be a good way to... Uh Light, uh, lighten my uh, lighten my collection and kind of continue to send money uh, to knife rights in the off season because uh, it's kind of like food donations. Like, like uh, people who need food donations don't just need them at the holidays. They need them year round. Right, well, right. it's kind of the same thing with knife rights. I thought you were going to say uh, do some knife auctions for yourself so you could uh, buy some more new knives. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, now, now I'm trying to be all. all <laughs> trying to be all that, aren't all you? All cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we have covered a lot of ground here on the midweek episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Any final thoughts from uh, the Knife Junkie, Bob, before we wrap it up? Well, Jim, I guess I'll just say it right here. Uh, I was just speaking with Mr. Slicey Dicey, and it seems uh, the Emerson he recently uh, he recently uh, re bought and reviewed uh, is just not living up to his standards. or yeah, Well, it's just not to his taste, I guess I should say. And so I'm going to be helping him out. I, and I think I'm going to be taking that Appalachian off his hands. He's giving me a nice deal. Mm. So, uh, that was so, nice of him. Yeah. Well, nice of me because he's got <laughs> well, this thing on his goes, hands. That and... goes without saying, Bob. <laughs> You're just so benevolent. I am. I'm a big guy. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Emerson Appalachian, beautiful, uh, slender Bowie knife coming my way shortly. So oh, okay. We'll talk about that sometime. We'll talk about that, and of course, we'll await the uh, the video on the Knife Junkies uh, YouTube channel. And uh, just kudos to Bob for getting back in the saddle on the video production. Uh, oh, a lot of new you. videos uh, coming up, uh, coming out and coming up on the Knife Junkie uh, channel, uh, theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. So for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person, thanking you for joining us on this midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.